Today, I'd like to share a thought from St. Francis's letter to young people and illustrate one of the points uh, he makes with the help of uh, the icon of St. Mark, which we can see on our screen. The detail to which I'm going to bring your attention will be that spark, that little shiny glowing star on the top of the book of the Gospel. Pope Francis's letter to young people is a timely read. It speaks to all ages, young age, middle age, and those who are aging. On the one hand, it helps us to rejuvenate our love for the Gospels and the Kingdom of God. For there is something in us, a part of our soul, which is never aging. The Holy Spirit creates a spark in us, and this spark is part of his presence, is part of his touch upon our lives. And this spark of joy and grace stays with us. While listening to what the Pope says, we are brought back to this first love, to this first spark of our discipleship. And when we read these chapters, we even sense how Francis is reliving those moments of youthful passion for Christ, which now he contemplates through the lens of his wisdom and through the lens of his decades of experience. There is a second reason as to why his letter to young people is a timely reading. Psychology and common experience knows that when someone has to live in fear and with anxiety for years, that fear and anxiety, that stress, accelerates the person's aging. It is visible. The skin, the face, becomes older. But most importantly, on the stress, our internal organs, our whole body, grows older under the years of stress. COVID-19 has been an immense pressure on all of us. That's why we need to lift up our souls. The experience of daily joy in the Holy Spirit is our anti-aging of the soul. We have to cherish and bring to surface the spark of the Holy Spirit, which is always in us, glowing and shining. And this spark will give fresh strength to our love. And now I'd like to quote Pope Francis. And these days, uh, on the weekdays, uh, we always put just a paragraph from his letter to young people on our uh, uh, Facebook page. So in paragraph 147, he writes, first, he encourages young people not to run away from enjoying the present moment. Because God is a God who invites us to enjoy the gifts of our lives. So in view of that, he writes, Clearly, God's word asks you to enjoy the present, not simply to prepare for the future. 
and he quotes from Matthew's Gospel, Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. But this is not the same as embarking irresponsibly on a life of dissipation that can only leave us empty and perpetually dissatisfied. Rather, it is about living the present to the full, living the present to the full, spending our energies on good things, cultivating fraternity, following Jesus, and making the most of little of life's little joys as gifts of God's love, making the most of life's little joys as gifts of God's love. This is our special mission in these months of the global epidemic. Our task is daily rejuven re rejuvenation, bringing to surface that joy of Christian faith which is always there in our life as a spark. And in this way, bit by bit, sparkle by sparkle, we can counterbalance all the anxiety and pressure which the epidemic puts on us. In illustration of this spark, I found a beautiful detail in the icon of Saint Mark. The cover of the Gospel shows the rays of Christ's teaching in our soul. These are the rays of joy and love and charity. The rays of joy, love and charity. And there is an added meaning to this spark. This is how Pope Francis urges us to evaluate and revaluate the present moment, because we tend to forget how precious our day is. In our day there are ups and lows, and in the moments of lows we just forget about the light of that spark. So. Let the moments of our friendship with our Lord, here and now, shine in our lives. Let it shine for ourselves in terms of our rejuvenation and for others in terms of the charity and good deeds which it inspires.